Now, here's the thing. Do you believe... I'm going to ask the question as straightforward as this. Do you believe Sir Keir Starmer? This one, uh, we've largely left this one alone a bit. Uh, the Keir Starmer beer and curry story, as it's now become known. The main reason uh, for not really touching it is because it tends to be a kind of fairly circular argument. I think you'll understand... Our, our listeners understand this kind of thing. If you hate Keir Starmer then you think he absolutely, definitely had a party. If you like Keir Starmer, you will insist he didn't have a party. It's almost as simple as that. It's exactly the same for Boris Johnson. One minute he's working away with the Chancellor, there's a knock at the door, a few shouts of surprise and happy birthday. And if you know, before you know it, the PM has been given a fine for breaching Covid rules. By any stretch of the imagination, of course, that does seem a little curious. Bonkers, some might say, unless you hate Boris Johnson, then, of course, he's committed the equivalent of second-degree murder. Such is the nature of the world we live in. Now, when we first heard about the Labour leader having a beer during a work meeting, the detractors, of course, pounced. Those who loathed Keir were on it. Look, he's done exactly the same as Boris has been accused of. This was a political observation people were making, not a legal one. Had he been drinking a cup of tea there would be no story. Having a meeting with your team was not illegal. Eating food was not illegal. Having a drink was not illegal. And if that drink happened to be a beer, that was not illegal. This was in the middle of an election campaign. Why would the Labour leader not be in a local constituency with his team of fellow politicians and campaigners? It couldn't get any less controversial. Or could it? You see, this might not have been quite such an issue had the Labour Party not relentlessly attacked Boris Johnson over the very same issue. Just weeks ago, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister told this House there was no party. How does the Paymaster General explain that? I know across the country people know enough. They have made up their minds about the Prime Minister, so when will his party catch up? There it is. And now her party is also in the dock. Over the last few days, the pressure is mounting on the Labour leader. The point, actually, that it all went wrong, and it's quite timely that we just played that clip of her, it all went wrong when they discovered that his deputy, Angela Rayner, was actually at the same event in Durham. This had previously been denied multiple times. It was then confirmed that she had been there, and Labour said it was an innocent mistake to say that she wasn't there. Now, I've never quite... This simply does not wash. Why was it so hard to establish if Angela Rayner, the deputy leader, was at a meeting with her colleagues? Is Angela Rayner so insignificant in the party that they couldn't remember if she attended? Or were there so many people there it was hard to spot her? Which one was it? This was a lie from Labour, and it cast the seeds of doubt. We were also told, here's problem number two, that the reason that Sakir and his cohorts were eating food was because the hotel that he was staying in wasn't doing any food. The hotel, however, we now understand has confirmed they were, in fact, doing food. This gets worse. In the event, Sakir and his team decided to call in the Deliveroo boys to drop off 215 quid's worth of curry. Uh, if you assume around about seven quid for a chicken tikka, that's 30 people. So this has gone from a small work gathering to a rather large work gathering. A work gathering with people he wouldn't normally be with. A work meeting with lots of people and lots of food. Was that in the rules? He was challenged on this very point by Sophie Rayworth to eat a takeaway whilst we were working in the office and then we carried on. This was, but, but just to work. put it in context, this was about uh, a few days before the May elections. We were really busy. We were, we'd been at it all day on Zoom calls. Uh, we were doing members calls from that very office. We stopped because food arrived but the, um, the, and then we carried on. There were rules in place and the guidance, the workplace guidance that was in place at the time. Participants should physically attend meetings only where reasonably necessary. There should not be any sharing of food and drink by staff who do not share a household. Bingo. That's it, right? That's the end of it. Can somebody call Durham Police, please, and tell them we've solved it? With some help from Rayworth, of course. That's it. Job done. 
So there was a rule broken there. It might not have been a party, but the word party is not the only criteria for breaking the rules. People were fined, remember this, for carrying a flask while on a walk in the park. People were fined for daring to sell cards in a gift shop. People were fined for walking into a building in a gym kit because they were suspected of attending exercise. There were lots of reasons you can be fined. So what makes the story of interest now isn't that Keir Starmer might have broken the rules, but it's the hypocrisy of him getting high and mighty and accusing the government of breaking the rules while seemingly doing the same thing himself. There is nothing we hate more as Brits than hypocrisy, particularly when it trickles out of Westminster. And Labour's defence hangs on the unsubstantiated claim that Sakir had carried... This is interesting. You heard it in that clip, that he'd carried on campaigning duties after the late-night meal in Durham. The party yesterday refused to specify what, if any, work was done. So the beer and curry happened. So they're having a meeting, OK? You can only imagine what a powwow that was. So they're all having a meeting over there in the Durham office. 30 of them, we think, possibly more. Uh, they call in the delivery. Hello, bring some curries over. There's like a load of us here, like 215 quid's worth. I wonder if they clicked for a tip for the, for the rider. So there they are. This arrived about 10 o'clock. So they all sit down for a bit of munch and a couple of beers. We've seen the video evidence of that. And then apparently he went on campaigning Friday night in a constituency office in Durham. Did Sir Keir Starmer seriously carry on campaigning at that point? He said it was absurd to suggest that the Friday night drink on April the 20th, 2021 was the end of his working day. Just to make this a little more interesting, last night another picture emerged of what looks like his official car, which would have been a police car, OK? He has um, a police protection team around him. So they might be able to provide testimony, testimony in the same way. Remember, they asked police officers over Partygate in Downing Street, speak to the police there all around, so many of those guys would have been interviewed. Surely his protection people could be interviewed as well. And then there's the two students that originally filmed this bit of footage, filmed the incident and said they'd been shocked to witness the Labour leader at what appeared to be rule-breaking at a social event. One said Keir Starmer had been so vocal about pushing for more lockdown restrictions. When I saw them, I thought, what a hypocrite. The hypocrisy really annoyed me, so I got on my phone I started to film them and uh, the second student added the point that I'd made the food thing didn't look like a work do he said it seemed like it's the sort of thing you do at the end of a good day's work when the boss says let's get this some food in for the team as a kind of reward it was a Friday night do you believe Keir Starmer 0344 499 1000 Boris Johnson or Downing Street might have broken rules the party gate thing is ridiculous and this may well be ridiculous but the point is, it's about consistency. It's about hypocrisy. And what we've got here is a large wad, industrial size, from the Labour front bench, from Angela Rayner mouthing off at any opportunity, to Keir Starmer denying at every step that he can that it was only to do with what it might have been. I'm not suggesting it was a party. It clearly wasn't a party in that sense. There wasn't balloons and volivons and trimmings and people blowing whistles and stuff. Nobody stuck on some karaoke. But it did appear that this is a breach of the rules. Keir Starmer says, nothing to see here. I'm pretty sure listening to this, you don't like hypocrisy either. 0344 499 1000. Do you believe Keir Starmer?